three astronauts have returned home after over a year in space, Brad. That's six months longer than planned. 12 months. God, how did they do it? <laughs> yeah, look, most space missions on the International Space Station now are six months. We've had a few year-long missions specifically designed. And what happened was this was the group of astronauts, so it was an American and two cosmonauts, that when they went up to the International Space Station, their capsule got a leak. Um, so during a spacewalk, they noticed that the capsule was leaking fluid. Um, and this appeared to be a puncture from a piece of space junk. And the problem was once that fluid was essentially leaked and the line was, was split, the safety and reliability of the capsule coming down was unclear. Because what happens is you have a capsule that takes you to the space station. It stays attached there both to serve as an emergency capsule if something goes wrong, but also your ride home. With the capsule inoperable, how do you get home? So we saw a few months ago uh, in about April, May, them sending a special capsule just to the space station for them to come home in. But the, that meant they had to... to turn their six months into a year. Normally, we like vacations turning double the length. In this case, <laughs> it was a, a an unplanned work trip that forced them the time. And it's kind of a problem because you train and adapt to the mission you're designed to. And there's a lot that happens to the human body with long duration space flight. So when they weren't prepared, there was definitely some surprises that they, they encountered during these 370 days. Well, that's it. I mean, 12 months in space, goodness me, the body must have been an absolute shock yes. being up there for uh, so long. Brad, let's move on. One of physics' greatest mysteries remains unsolved when it comes to antimatter. What is it? <laughs> so antimatter is a real thing. Um, if you remember back in school, for every action, there's an opposite equal reaction. If you push and their forces repel, in physics, Gravity pulls matter, the stuff that makes it me and you and the walls and the cameras. Um, it interacts with gravity. And we know antimatter exists. And the problem is when matter hits antimatter, they collide and annihilate each other. Now, that's all well and true. The problem is we're missing a lot of antimatter. If we should have equal amounts of antimatter as normal stuff, um, where is it? We don't know where a lot of this stuff is. One theory always said that maybe it interacts with gravity differently. If gravity pulls us down, maybe antimatter gravity pushes away. So when the universe formed, there was a theory that says maybe we formed a matter universe, essentially our universe, and then there was a complete antimatter universe where there's an anti-program where anti-us are talking on it right now. <laughs> it kind of sounds bizarre a world, but this really made sense until discovery that well, this is actually not what happens. Gravity interacts normally with antimatter and it kind of throws that idea out the window. So we're kind of back to the drawing board on where all this stuff is. Gee, it sounds all very complicated. Luckily, we've got people like you who understand the world of physics a lot better than I ever will, uh, Brad. Very interesting. Now, just finally, James Webb, the incredible telescope, has spotted the same supernova exploding three times. So this is cool because, you know, normally you think stars only blow up once, and that's usually the case, except in some situations you can have massive amounts of gravity that lens or magnify the light. Um, and you could do this, you know, if you put a hold a glass of water and you have light coming through, you can kind of see the, the light rays moving and bouncing around. You can see this in a pool. Well, this happens in space with gravity. And in this case, the supernova took different paths through space appearing in different spots. Now, what's exciting about having these different um, appearances is they each take a different path through space. By taking a different path through space, we can time and measure its left leaving an arrival, kind of like trains leaving the station. So if we know where it went, we know when it left, and we know when it arrived, we can probe the actual nature of space in between using the exact same object. So it's a really cool technique that I was a part of when we originally found the first one with Hubble. And now that James Webb in only a year has already found one, we hope that many of these across the universe can give us a really unique way of measuring how the universe is growing essentially in real time. James Webb just continues to kick a number of goals. That telescope's right. been incredible. Uh, Brad Tucker, lovely to speak with you as always. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thanks.